start off with. So we have a couple more people that uh, may be coming, but we can get started in the meantime. We want to start with introductions. I'm Nora Lochting. I'm the Director of the Community and Economic Development, which oversees planning and conservation, which are part of this plan. And I'm Abby McKeeve. I'm the town planner, so I work with Nora and the uh, planning board. Steve all on up on the planning board. I'm Jen Goldson. I'm one of the consultants. Uh, Mike Jay, I'm one of the newly appointed uh, members. I was involved in basketball and other youth sports. Pam Kane, I was on the last open space committee and I'm active in the Roger Christian, I'm on the Board of Health. Kristen Steyer, I'm here for uh, Westwood Land Trust. Uh, Chuck Sheehan, uh, <coughs> mostly involved with youth sports, especially soccer, soccer and basketball. Nate Carlucci, um, with PGC Associates, the other consultant. Joe Pogatero, out like Pam, I was on the commit on this uh, committee before, and I was on the conservation commission for three years. And Brian Gorman up on the planning board and conservation commission. Karen's going to become the conservation agent. And RJ Shear, and conservation. Uh, Nicole Chen, director of public works. And Nicole Banks, our recreation director, just came in and joined us. So you're all invited to participate in the uh, Open Space and Recreation Planning Committee. We're going to be working over the next few months to update the plan that was written in, it's actually written in 1999 and uh, approved in 2000. So it's been a long time coming. Ideally, a town would um, update its plan every seven years. So we're about 10 years behind the times here. Um, we're going to write a new plan that will be then updated in seven year increments going forward. And having a new up to date plan makes the town eligible to apply for grants. So that's our interest in getting this done. We uh, con recently contracted with PG so PGC Associates to help us with that. Um, and the first step that they did was complete a survey. Um, and I think Jen can walk us through the survey, let us know how many people responded to it, and some information on the results. I'm in Chinatown. Now I am. Oh, I'm in okay. Chinatown. Uh, <laughs> Briefly, I, I, though, because I'm moving next week to I near Symphony Hall. Yeah. <coughs> um, so I did not bring enough copies. I apologize. I, I think I brought 12, and I didn't know how many people were coming, and that's my fault I should have asked. So I'm happy to send around um, a PDF by email um, for those of you who won't walk away with one, or for all of you, for that matter. So I'm Jen Goldson. I'm a sub-consultant on this team, and um, I've been brought in to do the community outreach and the public engagement piece of it. And so the first thing we did was this survey, and this is just the result, you know, a summary of the results. If anybody wants the complete results, including all the comments and everything, happy to um, email that to folks as well. It ended up being a very long document. We had 641 responses. So the responses were terrific, very strong. And, um, you know, so we have every comment everybody made. So if anybody wants that, I'm happy to also pass that around. Um, what I thought I'd do is just briefly run through a summary of the results. But before I did that, I'm just curious. Could you raise your hand if you participated in the survey? <laughs> okay, good. So most of you. So, um, so we, you know, I won't read this word for word. You can always ask me questions um, after you take it home and and have a chance to absorb it, and we can send around the detailed results. But the main conclusions: um, we had 641 responses. It was open from November 13th through December 3rd. We did do it just a few day extension based on some uh, interest that was expressed at the last weekend, so we left it open a little longer. And um, and, uh, the re and so I'll just go through these bullets here, the main conclusions. The recreation areas most used by residents were the high school and middle school fields, as well as the Hale Reservation. Um, in general, residents thought that the cleanliness and the maintenance was very good and positive. Uh, but they wanted to see more uh, preservation and expansion of open space. They thought that there could be an ice skating or a hockey rink 
Um, is that something that you heard before? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and a public outdoor pool, a recreation center, better upkeep of grass fields, even though a lot of the comments said the upkeep and the maintenance was actually quite good. One comment, you know, uh, area we got in terms of better maintenance was the grass fields. Um, and then also better upkeep of some of the tennis courts and gyms. And I'm not quite sure exactly if they meant, you know, what we'd have to look back at the exact comments to see exactly where they're talking about. Um, and so they, ha uh, folks had said that Westwood Lodge, um, Islington property, and the church-owned land, which I'm actually not exactly sure where that is, you all might know, um, were options that um, should be acquired for, or restored, they said, for recreation or conservation purposes. Does that make any sense to you? The church owned land, I'm not sure if they're talking about land that the town purchased from um, the First, first, Parish. first Parish Church yeah. that we own about a year and a half ago we purchased some land there. Or if they're talking about the ICC in Islington, mm -hmm. which is a mm -hmm. former church building that we own but has no land associated with it. I see. So this may so. be talking about both of those, Okay, is my guess. But we can look back at the original comments and see if we can piece that together a little bit. Um, and so, and then the last one is just that conservation and preservation is a priority. But I did want to point out, um, even though I think you got a really good response rate, I think that you're missing some demographics in the community that might be important to hear from. And um, so we went back and we just saw, well, who responded to this? And um, you only had one kid under age 18. So I think that's something, you know, we could work a little harder to get, you know, I know my kids are, don't live here, but they're 13 and 11, and they could give you all sorts of opinions on <laughs> the places that they use and um, their opinions of it. You know, uh, my daughter said she had an app for this open space survey on her phone. I don't know. I was wondering how she would have an app. That's but the one. That's the one. The one I, do, I, don't think, I don't know that she responded, though, but I think something did go to kids, because when I told her where I was going, she knew. Oh, good. There was yeah, we a have survey. an online link that maybe she got. It's a yeah, survey. It was survey yeah. monkey. So she got the most technical. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so, so maybe we need to send that again or something. Mm -hmm. So we can think about that. It's very easy for us to open this and up, up again mm -hmm. if you want to. Um, but something to think about. Or we could look at, you know, maybe involving um, younger generations in the community workshop. Or we can talk through mm -hmm. some ideas. On How that. many requests were sent out? And so what was the what was the hit rate? I guess basically. On, on that. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't sent out to individuals. That. It was posted on the website um, and oh, sent through that. Facebook and Twitter to people on lists that we already had received. So anyone who was on a list that asked for information from the town, from the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Recreation mm -hmm. Commission, they received an email. It went out to local sports organizations who then in turn sent oh, it out to their membership list. Yeah. And it went in the district bulletin. And at the so, library. Right. There was a paper form the at the paper library forms too. At the library, both libraries. Yeah, very well, I thought it was very well advertised. Okay. Yeah. Or at but least we I got five or six emails about it. Right. But we didn't target mm -hmm. individuals, so yeah. it went out through oh, various yeah. lists. So there's no way of knowing for sure how many. A lot. So I had yeah. gotten several from basketball, yeah. from baseball, yeah, from football. So the the demographic that could be missing is actually households without children. It could know. be. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, and the other demographic that I think is missing is the over 65. We only got about six percent, and your population is about 20 percent over 65. So I just compared who we got responses from based on who actually lives here. Um, so something to think about. I don't, you know, just in terms of getting some broad feedback, we might, you know, I, I you know, it actually makes sense that we got a lot of parents, mm -hmm. um, given the responses. You know, most recreation used was high school and middle school fields, so that makes sense that there are a lot of parents here, you know, in this in this group. Um, so we can talk through more about if you want us to open. I don't. I'm not. I don't want to depress you. I don't. I think this is a great success that you got 641. I'm just always looking at. Well, did we hear from all the cohorts in this community that care or might use these facilities um, and these open spaces? And I think that the seniors and the and kids were underrepresented. So we did post it at the senior center as well as both libraries, paper copies. So for people who don't 
use computers, that they couldn't go online. They did have an option to uh, to fill out the survey, but if they weren't interested, you know, there's right. nothing, nothing more we could do. We could make a targeted effort to invite them to the visioning session yes. that we're having in January and maybe get their input that way if they're not interested in doing the survey. We could also give them paper copies of the survey if they come to that event. Um, but I'm not sure I'm not sure that there's a, a easy way to reach seniors other than through the senior center. Yeah, and the and the other thing that we've done sometimes, um, you know, it's not in our scope, but it would not be a problem if you wanted me to come to the senior center sometime at, at a schedule. You know, sometimes if there's something going on there, like if there, I don't know if the senior center has a regular lunch or um, other events, sometimes they'll let me get on the agenda. And I can, you know, talk through the process and even hand out the survey there or just get some feedback right on the spot. Um, so something to think about. I'm happy to do that. Sometimes if you go to where people are already, it's a little easier to get mm -hmm. the feedback. I, I do think that that 6% you got were the people who were at the senior center because the senior, the director of the senior center took the survey to the people that were there and helped them to fill it out. Oh, so, okay. So I think oh, that's the seniors good. we're missing are the seniors who don't use the I senior see. center. They might not use open space. They might not. They might not. But so so we'll give some thought to how how Sounds to reach good. that section. What, are, of what about Fox Hill Village? Yeah. Mm. yeah. They could reach out to the individual retirement communities: mm -hmm. Fox Hill Village, Highland Glen, Westwood Glen. Mm -hmm. Have them reach their uh, residents directly. Um, sometimes also for getting back to the kids, I've also worked with after school programs. Um, we had a, a project a few months back where we went to a couple of the after school programs and basically talked about the project, but then just provided the link. <coughs> this wasn't Survey Monkey; it was a different link, but it was the same kind of concept. And the kids actually just did it there in after school in the computer lab, um, filled out the survey. So, so something to think about. I'm happy to come to come in and do a, a little extra things like that um, if you think it would be helpful. So that was everything I wanted to, to chat about. Um, I don't want to you know take up the whole night. I know um, Nate has uh, some. Um, I think you wanted to talk through the work that you and Gino have done to date. And then I'm also happy to talk about the workshop when we get to that part in the agenda. And I have a outreach checklist I wanted to go through with you as well. Okay. Sure. So um, on our end, actually, we don't have too much to go over. Um, if you start at the beginning of an open space document, we have the community oh. settings section, um, environmental inventory section, and we're ahead of schedule on those. Um, the next big thing is the inventory of lands. Mm -hmm. um, and I know in the scope, that's on your end. Right. Um, so we're sort of on hold waiting for that before we move forward with the, um, you know, the remaining sections and also, of course, mm -hmm. before you can get into goals and whatnot, yes. um, we want to see what So we have an inventory plan. It, does, it hasn't changed significantly since the uh, 2000 survey. There were a couple of properties that changed hands, a couple of properties that changed uses. For instance, there was a, a school property that became a library. It's a library property that went into private ownership. So there are changes like that. As far as the conservation land goes, I don't believe there's been any acquisition of conservation land by the town since the plan was written in 2000. There has been um, conservation restrictions that have been placed on privately owned properties by the land trust. But I think that's the, you know, just very minor differences. So the we're working on the inventory to update those little pieces, but it's it's essentially what is in the 2000 plan. Not much has changed. We're somewhere in the 400 something acres of protected land. We okay. stay there, same place we were. Uh, what about Avatree Street? Yeah. Um, Avatree Street is the As far as open, if you look at open space within the community, mm -hmm. between there and First Baptist. No, what's the dead end street? Oh, yeah. Just before you reach the Norwood line on the left hand side. Bay, Bay Colony. Colony. Bay yeah, Colony. in between Bay Colony. And I think there's some land there that we ought to think about. Land that we own now or land that 
that may um, that may be an opportunity for us to oh, look for, at. Oh, for for acquisition. Which no, I think down? it's already been acquired by someone on Gay Street. Not not the town. You're saying the no. town. It's private. No, but I think land. there's some conservation restrictions okay. to it that is not listed in, in the open space land. So, wait, that's what I was trying to say. We do have conservation restrictions that have been placed on parcels since 2000. Right. But I don't think we have large parcels that we've actually acquired the title to the land. So I think there's been restricted property, but I don't think there's a very large difference in the town and property today right. Right. versus but, the town but, but and property in 2000. But that's a pretty good piece of land that's been protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and there's a, a number of properties along Gay Street mm -hmm. that have been protected since that plan was written. Same well. umbrella. Mm -hmm. okay. So we will um, we will update that information and get it out to you. Okay, that's yeah, great. I think the town might actually own some of that now with the con a conservation restriction from the from the land trust, the field behind the bean farm. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Steve. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we do we actually own that. I always get confused. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's definitely it's definitely, definitely protected. Yeah, we've, yeah. Gone, we've gone out there to deal with some issues in the past. I don't know whether or not it's owned by the town or not. There was some talk about fields. That's what backs talking. up to Bay Colony. Yeah, there was, some, there was some talk about fields yeah. there. Yeah. I just remember speaking to the Red Commission about it. So mm -hmm. that wait, wait, that Prout Farm, the former Prout yeah. Farm, we do own the former Prout okay. Farm. Then that should be included in this, right? Yes. Yeah, that's one of the but properties. I mean, that's that's one of the properties that has been added to the inventory yeah. since 2000. But there are very few. But that Pratt Farm has been added. Yeah, right. and that field there is protected as a field. Right. And we and we and we uh, part of, as part of the protection is when it gets cut, so that the right. bridge Once can rest here. in the summer. Mm -hmm. Right. If you go beyond that, Todd, mm -hmm. towards Bay Colony, yeah. I don't think they put the restriction on that. Right. I don't know. But I remember going in there because they had pumping set up, so it's an apparatus set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone there, the cabin. Yeah. 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 But that's that's the big open space I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. It's changed okay. since 2000. The wooded, the wooded area. Yeah, yeah. Like beyond that. Okay. Um, the other thing that we've been working on lately is the ADA component, which I don't believe was a part of the 2000 plan. It was not. Um, so it's starting from scratch, and the only issue I've had so far in that was um, the state asks you specifically to inventory um, lands that are in the jurisdiction of conservation or recreation, but not the schools. So I'm sure someone can help me with this. There's one site um, between the Sheehan School and, um, and, and the Pond. Pond. It's a separate parcel. So That's owned by sure. the town, not by the school. Okay. It, uh, uh, they're both owned by the town. The the one that actually has the school on it is managed by the school. The one that has the baseball fields and soccer fields is managed by the town. Okay. So that so you we'll would want to cover in your, your accessibility. Report. Okay, thank you. And the one next to it is owned by the town. The Buckmaster the, lot. Yeah, where the parking yeah. lot is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Conservation yeah. lands on the other side. One on the one on the other side. Okay, so maybe we could review the timeline a little bit, and um, what I'd like to do is get us ready for the community workshop. And um, the date that we were talking about is, I think it was the January 18th, and um, so that gives us, I don't know how many weeks, maybe about six weeks or so. And the idea of that workshop would be to help the community um, understand the work that's been done to date, the existing resources, and what maybe what's changed since the last plan. Um, like that, is it Prout Farm you're calling it? Yes. Maybe the acquisition of that and going through anything else that's changed. And then we'd probably give them a presentation um, around what was in the last plan and what do we think might still be relevant to consider, um, and then give them some exercises to do. They could either do them in small group exercises, uh, or we could do more of an open house style, where we're asking them to kind of weigh in on what goals and priorities they think should be incorporated into the plan. Um, and so what I'd like to do is first talk a little bit about the outreach um, I'm 
guessing by the level of the folks that took your survey. Sorry, I feel like I'm looking at you and um, By the folks that took your, the number of folks that took your survey, my guess is you're not going to have a problem getting people out to a meeting. Um, but I do go over with all my clients this checklist. It's just a standard checklist. So you may feel like some of this is not relevant to you and others are maybe good ideas or the things that you normally do. And I just have 12, so you have to share um, the things that you normally do work the best. And that's fine. So these are just um, ideas to consider. And, um, and you'll see they're, you know, they're pretty standard things. The first is something that you should do right away, which is put out a save the date if you haven't already. You may have done that already. Yep. And um, and usually what I recommend is doing um, blasts to all the email lists that you have, boards and committees, if there are residence lists, um, whatever you have, even your own personal lists of folks in Westwood, the things that you're involved with in Westwood. It's fine if people get multiple save the dates. Um, some communities also do like little postcards that they leave around, counters, library, senior center, mm -hmm. um, in addition to flyers and things like that. So right now is the big push on save the date. And then about four weeks before the workshop, so um, you know this is coming up pretty soon, and I know with the holidays it gets a little hairy, so I would try to stay right on top of this four weeks, um, is when we do a bigger push. And um, what I recommend that you do tonight or shortly there, or shortly, you know, soon after tonight, if you're meeting again, um, is to assign all of you different roles and responsibilities, either based on this list or a list that you come up with. And you'll see in the back that I just listed some of the roles that you could assign. Um, again, you don't have to use this. I'm not trying to be prescriptive, but sometimes people find it helpful to go through and say, you know, so-and-so, I'm going to be a flyer distributor. And, um, and so about a month before, what you'd want to do is really push social media hard. You have town? I'm sorry, I probably asked, and I can't remember. You said you have Facebook and Facebook Twitter? Facebook and Twitter, yes. And Recreation has their own separate ones. Oh, great. I would okay. use Western Bulletin Board on Facebook, too, because there's a lot of residents who... Oh, great. That so that's a, like a private... It's a, pri it's a closed yeah. group, but closed you, can, group. you can request access to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I can post something to it. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Um, we often create an Eventbrite link for people to register. I'm, I'm happy to do that if you think it's something. Some towns say, oh, we don't need that. Nobody will register. And other communities feel like that's something that might be helpful. It's just an online invite. Um, it's still an open public meeting. Anybody can just walk in. There's no requirement to pre-register. But I find it helps in two ways. Um, one, it helps us figure out how many people might attend. Um, and it helps us with copies. So I'm not short on copies like I am tonight. Um, and refreshments and things like that helps us figure that out. But it also, I find, just psychologically helps a little bit. If somebody commits to going and they register, they're more likely to, to follow through and go. And it also sends out an automatic reminder. Um, little, you know, information about the meeting. So that's something I can do if you'd like me to. Um, and then we do another round of email blasts about four weeks before. Um, we also ask each of you to commit to personally inviting, I say, 10 people, at least 10 people. And you'd want to just coordinate a little bit so that you're not all inviting the same exact people. Um, and what I mean by personally invite, I don't mean to do a 10-person email that you invite or 20-person email. I find that what really works best is if you pick up the phone or you run into somebody in town hall or um, at the grocery store and you personally say, hey, I'm involved in this steering committee and we're having this important meeting. We'd like you to come and bring your friends, family, neighbors enemies, anybody. So personal invites from you all goes a long way and really representing this group as something that you're part of and that it's important to you that folks are coming. And um, the next thing is just doing traditional flyer that you distribute around. Um, do you do you find your local access um, cable TV is watched as yes, something that... Yeah. Okay, so I would post Oh, there you are. So I would post um, community announcements. Sometimes there's also a show that inside, somebody can go Inside on. Westwood. There yes. you go. Yep. Monthly news. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would say that somebody from this committee, do you have a chairperson or this is your first meeting? This is our first oh. meeting. So 
Um, it's up to you who goes, but I would say that Inside Westwood should interview one of you, or two of you, or however you want to do it. Um, I would also, each of you, get on a certain number of boards and commissions. You said what you represent. I don't remember all of the Board of Health, and I don't remember all of them, but I would get on the agenda of your board and commission and make an announcement, say this, the date, pass out the flyer. But I'd also get on an agenda of other boards and commissions that maybe aren't represented around this table. Um, and I want you to get on their agenda. I want you to be an agenda item in the next month, if you can. I know it's a little tricky sometimes. But it's a quick agenda item, so maybe you can slide in. It's five minutes, appear on their agenda, talk about this process, and ask them to please all come to the meeting. Um, and then is your board of selectmen uh, taped? Is it? It is. Yeah, yes. so that's a great one to be at um, because it gets um, aired. Um, I'd also suggest that you send out a press release um, and uh, try to do an interview with, I assume you have relationships with your local reporters. I don't know which papers are most well read here. We have the Westwood Press and the hometown paper. So in addition to just the press release, I'd actually call, I'd have one of you or two of you assigned to contact the local reporters who you think would cover it and offer to do an interview. What was it, Westwood Press? Westwood and Press and Hometown Weekly. Both weekly papers, we don't have a daily in Westwood. Okay. The Hometown Weekly is free and goes to everybody. Goes to every house. So that, that's well read. Great. Thank you. Um, and then I would also recommend, and I say this hesitantly only because nobody ever takes me up on it, but I actually think I have one client who's going to do it, someone I, I was meeting with a couple weeks ago. This means that it's work for you folks, but I think if you assign a few of you to write letters to the editors, uh, to the, you know, maybe both papers, maybe one, you can pick and choose, but I would do it from your own angle, like you're on the Board of Health, right? So maybe there's something about, you know, health that you can tie, or the environment, you know, water um, quality that you can tie to you know your viewpoint but I would write very personal letters to the editor personal in the sense that you know you're residents of Westwood and you you obviously care about this this subject and this plan so I wouldn't want it to be the same as the press release which will be very like kind of a little boring um, but you'd want it to be like from your own perspective why are you serving on this committee why is it so important that people come out to this meeting and um, I find that um, if you give it a bit of a personal twist and you'd want to pick you know maybe three or four of you some uh, the community that I think is actually going to do this um, is trying to get one published every week leading up to um, you know the four weeks prior to their workshop so something to think about. Um, so welcome to your first meeting. You now have all this homework that I'm giving you. Um, and then right before the workshop, just do another round of blasts two weeks before and then the day before the same thing. So that's, those are my recommendations. You can take them or leave them. And, um, but I, I do think unless you're going to have another meeting in the next uh, week or two, that you should figure out who's doing what tonight. All right, so on that note, why don't we establish the uh, group and elect a chair. Do we have any nominations? You're welcome to nominate yourself. Anyone who's interested in chairing this committee? Don't all jump at once. Yeah. <laughs> Someone step it up. I nominate Steve if you're interested. I know that you have a lot on your plate, but I just all right. I'll second the nomination. Aye. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Steve. All right, Steve, there you go. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, well, one question. So where are we on the... the uh, so we, d we sort of skipped over one section, which was a review of the Open Space and Recreation Plan from 2000. And I didn't want to actually review through the whole document. I just wanted to make sure everyone had a copy of it and had a chance to take it home and look at it in your leisure time, just so you have an idea of what the plan looks like. The format has changed slightly since this was written, but not significantly. 
it's full of tables that list the, um, the recreation parcels, the um, conservation parcels, recreation <coughs> programs that we have in town, population data, workforce data. So we'll get all of that information updated. But there are also sections of it that are narrative and describe um, the town's philosophies with open space, um, uh, their goals and objectives uh, in different sections. There's also a long section that describes the public participation process that we went through back in 2000. We'll be doing, rewriting that for this public participation process. But I just wanted to just make sure everyone had a copy and has a chance to look at it just to give you an idea of what we had done before. The new plan doesn't have to be exactly like this. We're not reusing the language that's in here. We're really starting fresh. Right, so I had one question, and that is, what are the different responsibilities of the consultant versus the rest of the community? Well, the consultant is going to actually help us with the writing the plan. They're doing all of the data updating, uh, with the exception of the inventory. We're updating the inventory. They're going to do the accessibility plan um, and, and help write the draft of the document. And then this committee will have input going into that to give them the information they need to write the draft. But then we'll also review the draft carefully and, and edit the draft before a final product is sent to the planning board. And, and we'll design and facilitate the public engagement, the workshop. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear on the process, this steering committee will come up with a draft plan. That draft plan will be presented to the planning board, and the planning board will take it from there. And they will create, from that draft plan, they will create the final plan, and they will adopt that plan. And then once that's adopted, um, actually before the planning board adopts it, they'll create the final plan. It'll be sent out to all of your, your other committees that you're here representing. Each of them will have a chance to make recommendations to the planning board on whether they should go forward with the plan as written or if there are further revisions that should be made. Then the planning board will take a vote, adopt a final plan with whatever revisions it feels are appropriate. And then once it's been adopted, then the planning board will take it to town meeting and request the town meeting endorse the plan. So one big change from before is the ADA component? Yes. So is there a separate group for that to link all of the subcommittees or are they all going to do their own thing on the ADA part? Well, the ADA part will be written by the consultants and be reviewed. Everyone will have an opportunity to review it. Everyone who's on that. that committee, this committee will have an opportunity to review it and, and give specific input about the, the sections that you're familiar with. We also did invite a member of the um, Disability Commission, uh, Marianne Cardi, serves on this committee. She couldn't make it tonight, but she'll, I'm sure, play a large role in that section of the plan. The 2000 plan did have an implementation strategy to prepare an accessibility report, but I don't believe it was ever prepared. And what about someone from Hair Reservation? Do we have anybody? We don't. Um, I believe we had invited them, but I don't believe they sent any representatives. So I think we will have them have their participation in the visiting, um, visit, visioning session, and I think we'll be able to get a member to review our draft. I just don't think they had anyone who was available to attend meetings. Okay, but the, so officially we didn't make anyone a member. We did not appoint, no. no we, we did not appoint. Yeah, I think that's fairly important that we Mm -hmm. We'll involved. make sure we in, let them know when our meetings are and invite them to participate, but they are not a, uh, a seating member of the committee. Mm -hmm. So the consultants will be doing most of the writing and we'll do based upon what we have to say. That's right. So this committee is responsible for identifying goals and uh, policies and uh, suggesting strategies. And the consultant will give suggestions for what they've seen in other communities. And then this committee will decide which of those goals, policies, and strategies should go into the plan and which are not appropriate for Westwood. And anyone that wants to specifically submit some item or something, they can do it or you can do it in writing or That's right. verbally. That's right. So <coughs> actually, we should, we should discuss that a little bit. The open meetings law doesn't allow each of us to communicate as a board for fear that we reach a quorum and that would constitute <coughs> discussion outside of a public meeting. But e every one of you can communicate with staff. So if you have ideas, suggestions, wording for the plan, something you think we should look at in between meetings that you'd like to send to us, you can send that directly to staff. Just don't copy each other on it. And then we'll make sure that information gets back to the whole committee the next time we meet. 
So would that be you, Nora, that we send it to? You can send it to me, to Abby, or uh, to Karen, or to Nicole. You know, I think Steve's point is right about the uh, Hale Reservation because I was surprised that the response to the dog park, we dealt with this on the, on the commission. I know Hale's three steps ahead of us, so this would be helpful if, you know, like Terry was yeah. involved with that. But they, they were ahead of us on it. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll ask again and see yeah. if we can get them to send a representative. And the workshop, so members from the community can come and just yes. give us their ideas or yes. be presenting ideas? Or so both? the way that I would structure it is we <coughs> would um, give them information first um, in terms of existing conditions and what maybe has changed since the last plan in terms of new acquisitions or new conservation mm -hmm. restrictions. And then we would structure it so that we're asking them to weigh in on very specific things. And it could be, I've done this a number of different ways, and we'll have to design it. Um, but one thing we could do is take the goals from the prior plan and the priorities, and the ones that haven't been, you know, if there's, there are things that are irrelevant in here, we wouldn't bother to ask them about it. But for things that are still relevant, we would, we could ask them, do you think this is something that we should consider keeping in the plan or putting into this new plan? Um, and what are your other ideas? And we probably break it down into different, um, you know, we probably look at open space conservation for um, for different purposes. So you'd look at, you know, how important is habitat value and water protection and how important is passive recreation opportunities. Um, and within those different categories, what are priorities in the communities? And we would run them through exercises where at the end of it, we would understand, at least the group that's participated that night, what their, what goals and priorities and their vision for, um, for Westwood. So then we would take that summary back to this group and vet it more and go through process with you to figure out if what we're hearing from this community is representative of what you all think, representing all these different boards and commissions. Um, and then if there's any other feedback that we have at that time from, you know, kids or seniors, we would integrate that all together. So that would be generally the way we would do it. We can design it in lots of different ways, but that's just a, sort of a general. And what I'd want to do with you all is when we get closer to the workshop, you know, maybe even in early January, um, or maybe the second, you know, at least give me two weeks prior to the workshop, I'd want to go through how we think we're going to design this with you and get some feedback on that um, before we really produce the materials and the presentation slides and if we're going to have any boards or workshop exercises. I'd love to run through my ideas on that with you and get some feedback. So I don't know what kind of a meeting schedule you're thinking of, but if you could plan to have us back, you know, about two to three weeks prior to the workshop, that would be great. So I think because of the timing, the workshop is on the 18th of January. We've got the holidays in there, so I think two weeks would probably be the closest I think that's we can fine. do. So, yeah, um, that's fine. Beginning of January. So before we leave here today, we'll try and set a date that everyone's available. And since we're on community access television, let's repeat the the uh, the, the date, the time, and exactly where. It's so going to we be don't have the location yet. But it will oh. be on January 18th at 7 p.m. And the location will, that's something that this committee should discuss. Um, the possibilities are Thurston Middle School Cafeteria or um, Westwood High School Cafeteria. The library is not available, and I don't think there's any other space in town that's large enough for, uh, to encourage a large group of people to come. So um, one of the elementary schools would be another possibility. But parking is an issue at all the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. The high school is the best for parking. Mm -hmm. First Parish Hall has a beautiful new hall. That's true. They do. It's um, parking. Parking is better than better than yeah. has been in the past. Yeah, so yes, that's a possibility as well. All right, so we should actually decide that now. And, and we'll have to see if it's available. We won't know. If, we won't be able to announce it. We can we can list the priorities, <coughs> oh, and then we'll have to check with the the schedules to see which rooms are available. Oh. So you don't really know if the... I know Thurston Cafeteria is available. 
I haven't checked on, on the, high school? the high school and I haven't checked on First Parish Church. And I wouldn't recommend the elementary schools because no. they all have a, a parking shortage. The auditorium is offline? Or is that not large enough? For um, no, the, or, the auditorium is unlikely to be available in mid-January because I think the plays begin yeah. practicing then. But even if it was, I don't know that it's the format for the discussion. Yeah. I think we want something where people think yeah. flexible space. Yeah. Yeah. So the high school has better parking? The high school has better parking. The cafeteria in the high school is a little bit, doesn't work as well, yeah, but we can make it work. Um, Thurston Cafeteria works better, but there's less parking. So. <coughs> it's a much smaller cafeteria, too. Isn't it a little smaller? Thurston is, is big enough. We've had yeah, several laid workshops out, laid there. Out in a better, it is. I think it's a better way to yeah. generate that conversation. And the lighting is good. Yeah. And, um, Sound equipment. Every everything in Thurston works very well for this type of. Well, there's a senior center where people could park in too. Right. They could. That's right. That's right. But Thurston is the best layout yeah. to do any. And we know it's available. Right. Yes. And we could just book mm -hmm. it now and. Yeah. All right, everyone. All right. Agree? So yes. we'll go with Thurston then. So it will be. Let's repeat the date again and the time and it's the Thursday, Thursday January 18th, seven o'clock. At the Thurston Middle School cafeteria. Right. All right. Do you also want to try and find another date to meet now? Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, sometime after January third. Well, the fourth is two weeks before the eighteenth. That works for me. That definitely maybe works for me. <laughs> definitely maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like does work for me. Yeah, Thursday, January 4th. Yeah. <coughs> and to 7 o'clock, 4 o'clock, right? Sure. All right, we'll set that meeting then. And we'll meet here again. Well, the fourth is that's the date everyone moved things out because they didn't want it right after. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, we know exactly. that's available. So, did you also want to talk through the outreach? So this is this is uh, you really want to get down to who's going to do what for? Uh, yeah, who's going to do what and what on this list do you think is helpful to your community in terms of implementing or other things not on the list? Does it make sense to start with um, groups that we can? push this out to, so mm -hmm. the different sports groups, the different uh, community groups, et cetera. That's pretty easy, low-hanging fruit. Um, I can start, so I can definitely uh, communicate this to all the basketball families, which is a pretty pretty large group of uh, both present and past families. Yeah, and, Same and soccer. soccer, but then the other thing is, is you know, just send an email, we know all the people that run lacrosse and baseball and everything yep. else Absolutely. as well, so. Um, I think between the two of us, we could knock out all the sports. Yeah. And you can make sure you we have a complete call list. You know who to call if you don't have yeah. anything. Yeah. Make sure we've included Nicole. Make sure we have everyone included. Um, yeah. yeah. I can put it on Western Bulletin board. Okay. What about reaching out to the PTO for the different schools? If we could do that. We placed um, advertisements for the survey in the district bulletin that ran three weeks and that that had a, a reminder yep. on it yep. of January 18th so we can put now another flyer that goes in the district bulletin about the workshop itself is there is there a, uh, a write-up that you'd want us to use or just the, the, the standard announcement um, why don't I put something together okay. and I'll, I'll email right. it to that, everyone on the committee that's the first item I'll create a flyer or, mm -hmm. and you'll do that yeah. 
uh, press release. I can do that. And, uh, report of contact. Yeah, I'll do that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Well, unless anyone would prefer to do no, that. No, at, 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 at the patch. Yeah. Yeah. At the patch, do it as well. The patch. Well, the patch. <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, they have. Heavy duty yet. We have not had any activity with them in probably three years. But I it, it seems that they get just probably they like just grab. Other. They do. They, they grab. Yeah. Space, yeah. I don't yeah. think they have a reporter assigned to Westwood, but I. I'll try and actually have personal contact with them. Now we have most boards covered. The selectmen, uh, you know, uh, let them know. Um, what other boards? The you know, conservation commission is covered here. Uh, so disability is uh, not here tonight. So just follow They're not. Them. With them. I'll follow up there. Yeah. Yeah. Staff can let all the board meetings yeah. now. Does this disability committee ever have meetings? Or? They do. Yes. Because I haven't the seen them listed. Yeah. No. Yeah, right, they meet in the daytime, I think they meet in the morning, every other month, I believe. Would it be appropriate to ask members of the, uh, the ARC, or someone from the ARC, thinking about disabilities and mm -hmm. their interest in having mm -hmm. more activities outside their facility? Mm -hmm. they, we could ask them to participate in the workshop. And, and is there a FinCon meeting between now and then that we can... Mentioned it up there. Maybe. I believe it's on the yep. ninth. Yep. I'll tell all four people when we have to. Okay. It won't take long. We can make it. Roger and I are both on the Westwood community chest. We can put that up. Bring it to them. What about the legal and voters, Westwood residents? Should you? I mean, I can do that. Yeah. Could you? Yeah. Be great. Okay. Okay. The land trust is meeting on the 9th. I will be at the planning board. I don't. Does anyone I have a contact for them? Okay. I can let them know. They should be very interested in this. Mm -hmm. Young families. Okay. So if you can, I'll, I will send the flyer to everyone. Yeah. And then if you can send it Absolutely. out to everyone. Okay. Chuck, we should also try to get on the, the not only get the notice out to all the different sports, but get on their agendas. Because, you know, not the <laughs> non-winter sports won't probably won't be having meetings, but the others will. So. We meet here, round. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we do. What about something to all the churches to put in their bulletins? Because you might catch the, good idea. the mm -hmm. more elderly mm -hmm. people True. there for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the school committee? Uh, yes, actually, the school committee is going to send a representative to this committee. We don't have one yet, but they are. Do you want people to reach out to whatever church they go to, or are you planning on reaching out to the church? Um, why don't we do it both ways? If everyone can reach out to their own okay. church, and then I will send an announcement by email to each of the churches and to, um, to hold that favor. One of the things you mentioned was the um, involvement with students. Does it make sense to you know talk to Sean and, um, and even the middle school to have them help in... You know, I mean, I think they could, if they put their mind to it, they could very easily get significant feedback for us. Mm -hmm. um, is that someplace we want to go? The more feedback, the better. So, yeah. especially if it's something that they could do maybe during their PE classes yeah. or wellness classes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, maybe they would be willing to give them the survey in class. Mm -hmm. and yeah. okay. We could get the results back that way and then make an announcement of the um, January 18th. A meeting on a Thursday evening may be difficult for students yeah. to attend, sure. but we might get some of the high school But that, that kind of feedback would be, would be great. I, I'm happy to talk to Sean, as I'm sure okay. other people are here, too. Great. Another thing we'll listed here is social media and... Yeah, so we when we create the flyer, we will send it to Christine McCarthy to post on the a Facebook and send out a tweet, and we'll do we can do the same on recreation. Okay. So just a quick question about uh, the school. The contact there would be someone from the school committee? So the school committee is going to send a representative. I don't okay. know who it's going to be. We also have uh, the facility staff. Uh, Ken is Ken Aries is on this committee. He couldn't make it today. Okay, but he's that's participating what I was. That's well. actually what I was curious. So about. we have both. We that's have we have the policy end and the um, facilities end. Yeah, but that'd be you know less of 
less voice of kind of the, of the, the, students, the, of the students, right. more of a, you know, kind of a process type, um, yeah. you know, kind of answering questions about the facility, et cetera. Yeah, but like I've, over the years, I've had casual conversations with Matt uh, Gillis about, you know, what it is the high school, this is well before this committee came up, but just what it is that the high school's interested in as far as how they use fields and things. And so I guess Ken would be the point person mm -hmm. for that, so. All right, cable TV interview. Yeah, who would like to do that? Anyone? I know that once a month, John Cummings uh, just filmed the last one. And he's always looking for more people to interview. So I, I, when he filmed the last one, just about a week ago, I did put in a plug for the uh, January 18th Save the Day. Okay. But it would be great to have someone from the committee who wants to be interviewed about the plan. And what's the name of that program? Inside Westwood. Inside Westwood. Inside Westwood. Inside Westwood. And Homework the next for everybody filming to go, is on go January 3rd. Yeah. First, yeah. first, first two Inside Westwood. <laughs> And the first just there's only two? There's only two. Just started. Oh, started. Okay. Started. They did one on the end of October and the beginning of December. The next one is scheduled for January 3rd. So whoever would That's good want time. to be on it would go to um, Westwood Media Center on Fur Wall Street. And it will only take 10 minutes at most to just sit down there and have an interview with John. And so does it make sense to have somebody from staff? And then somebody from community, or does it not matter? I don't uh, think it matters. Anyone okay. who's interested in just being the face of the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the committee. So, is anyone interested? I'm there all the time. So I'm on their board. I mean, I, I'm, I could certainly be one of them. You know, either, either one of us, I think, from a, a you know, kind of a sports kind of background. And if there's other, you know, other group that wants to. You've got a good mug for TV. Oh, yeah, right. And so anyone that wants to see it can just go online and uh, look for it. We'll, 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 we'll send a link. It's broadcast, yeah. it's but broadcast it's also if you go to uh, westwoodmediacenter.tv. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Westwoodmediacenter.tv. Um, and then there's also, yeah, there's a link to the uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. channel. So, but we can, uh, as, as a follow-up, we can send a link out to Inside Westwood so you can kind of get a, get a sense of what it is. If anyone's interested, also, my email is listed on there, so you can contact me as well if you're interested. Either myself or John Cummings will be fine. Thank you. Who's the, who's the second person that's coming to do it? I'll join. Okay. Sweet. Great. Is that going to be from an environmental standpoint? Because we need something from an environmental standpoint. Too. Yeah, I mean, certainly, yeah, we've talked about from that point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Conservation. And, and by the way, happy to get any and all feedback. I mean, again, it, we, just to make sure that we're not, you know, coming at it from one angle. It would be just more about, you know, all of the reasons why this is really important to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll maybe I'll we'll reach out to the to the group to make sure that yeah, we're getting capturing all the bullets. Sure. So, in the email I'm sending out with the information with the flyer, I'll also send talking points, and then right. everyone can um, let me know if they want to add. Awesome. And we respond to you. Yes, respond to me, not to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. All right, and the last thing on the list is emails, email blasts. So, so I will send this flyer to everyone. I will make sure it goes out to the town's email list, but then if each of you can send it out to your private email list, we can do this, sir, and then all of our um, direct participants. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I mean, don't just forget about the letters to the editor idea. I know I don't sell it very well, <laughs> but I do think it's effective. So when I send out the talking points for the interview, you can use those to put together a letter, anyone who's interested in doing it. Is anybody interested in doing the letters at this point? I'll do a letter from yes. WEAC. Okay. Great. What does WEAC stand for? <laughs> <laughs> Westwood Environmental Action Committee. Got it. Chuck, any, any interest from in, in doing a letter to the editor? There's, yeah, there's the uh, from a sports the, perspective. I, yeah, I, I could do that. Um, I mean, I also have the perspective of I'm, I'm a naturalist <coughs> as well, but I mean, it was the sports angle that brought me here. So but nobody, I could walk around. Both, hell, I could walk around both, hell in the dark. Right. I mean, I could walk around there blindfolded. I've spent so much time there. So. You should write a letter. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this has to be the most, if everything happens like this, it will be the most publicized thing. All right, so we want to move on to uh, anything else? Uh, I have a list of things, you know, we, we can, without jumping into too much level of detail, uh, cover topics that we want to have in the, uh, in, in the plan, which, uh, you know, may or may not be in there, but things you want to emphasize, and I have a, I have a list if, uh, you start thinking about you it, want, okay. And we want to start down the list. So one of the things that over the years that I've been talking about, uh, the conservation commission is to have uh, management plans for the uh, for the conservation land. Uh, something that's really never been done, and each conservation area really needs a, a, a separate plan. It needs because they're all different. There, there are some, and I <laughs> look. The funny thing in, in the survey, it mentions some conservation lands, and if you haven't heard of them, it's because some of them. Uh, conservation land, but they're not meant to be anything other than a buffer between, for instance, uh, a residential area and a commercial area. And so, no one, I'd, I'd be surprised, did you get some zeros in there? I don't um, remember, I'd have yeah, to go back I mean, and look. They had to have been on some of those, they had to have been zeros because I can't... You didn't know. You didn't know they were lying, yeah. <laughs> so, so we, we need uh, a plan, uh, a case in point, uh, uh, years ago, on Canton Street, uh, there was a farm there. The Curry Farm. Uh, the Curry, well, yeah. I just, uh, it was Farmer Anderson, that's what I called him. And he had a, he uh, had sheep and, and uh, geese on that field. Uh, when he died, the town acted very rapidly to acquire that land as conservation land. But because there's no plan or anything, there's no thought, very rapidly, without the geese and the sheep there, the field became a forest. Uh, so the management team would make decisions like that. You know, do we have a field here, or, or do we keep it as a forest? Because it, uh, it's unfortunate no thought was given to that, because there is a need for fields. New England has become overgrown with, with uh, forests since the farmers moved out, and exactly what happened here, uh, and there, there's uh, birds and wildlife that, that need a field to, to live in, and uh, there's a shortage of them now. And when's the last time anyone saw an eastern meadow lark? Uh, no comment. So, uh, so the plan, so are we going to be doing this as part of the plan? Is that too much, or, or should we just be saying uh, the conservation plan should be doing the conservation commission? Or who should, and all these questions, are like who's going to do it, how they're going to do it, when are they going to do it? So the, those are the kinds of questions uh, that need to be answered. Uh, another thing that's come up over the years is on conservation land, who owns it? We, we found that there were mistakes, that the conservation land was put in under the name of the selectmen, and that means it's not really, it is not conservation land unless it, at the Registry of Deeds it says, Town of Westwood Conservation Commission. And we, uh, uh, one time we're going to check those and you can try to correct them. Has that been done? It has been done. Anything? So we had uh, in turn prepare uh, an updated inventory mm -hmm. and we have book and page numbers of deeds for all of the, the properties that the town has acquired. And then we have copies of those deeds. I think we still need someone who's going to go through them and determine what the status of the restrictions are. Okay. So maybe we can discuss that here, or uh, may not end up, if we come to conclusions here, I don't know if we need a part of the plan, but the fact that we, we cover that, that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I know recently, uh, when looking at, uh, no, I don't know, maybe it's just the surveyors, they listed the land off of, uh, uh, what's the street that we just? Sandy Valley. Sandy Valley. <laughs> Uh, and they just it just said town of Westwood. It didn't say town of Westwood. So, so in most region. of the properties, the ownership is the town of Westwood, but it can be listed as in the care and custody of the conservation commission. 
So, but we want to make sure that that's done. The the uh, our town does not come out very well when you list the percentage of of protected land, and one of the, the two reasons. But I think maybe maybe it has to do with we haven't been registering it properly. Another reason is Hale Reservation is a huge chunk of open space in the town, which is not protected land. And, uh, and that's why we need Hale Reservation here, maybe part of this or a part of the plan. We should have a discussion on, you know, what, what can be done to uh, have conservation easements on the uh, Hale Reservation so that it is protected. Uh, that's something that I think is very beneficial to the town. It's not something that Hale Reservation it would have any uh, incentive in particular to do, uh, just to be an effort for them and, and cost, but we should, uh, I think that's something that should be discussed. Uh, we, at one time we did have, and I think the, someone from the land trust wrote up a pamphlet with some maps of, of conservation lands in the town. We don't really publicize our conservation lands. Uh, we don't have any activities on them. These are all things that conservation commissions in other towns, they have programs, they have hikes, uh, they try to educate people about uh, open space, they, uh, and they have maps available for people to, to uh, people who mention both on the conservation land uh, a lot of people won't do it unless they have a map to know where they're going. So uh, we get we need to update that or come up with new ones. Who's, to who's going to do that? Uh, how's that going to be financed and so forth? We do that. This isn't the original one. Actually, Steve, there is. Yeah, that's remember, Bob? That's uh, one thing that, that, that could come out of this committee is to play up. You know, Diane's take a hike. Pamphlets it's right on the web. We're probably going to mention that in our recommendations that people, you know, are aware that there are resources on the town's webpage to facilitate hiking in Westwood. Mm. You know, that looks like an abbreviated version. We need, yeah, we need some, we need something, and, and of course, all these things nowadays. You know, I said we only had a pamphlet. Nowadays, you you write something and it's on the website, mm -hmm. uh, and. So a lot, you know, a lot of it is, is not really writing it, but getting up, look it on the website so people can find different things and can find different places they want to go easily. Uh, you, now I mentioned how uh, the Courier uh, Conservation Land was acquired when uh, very rapidly the town came in and bought that, that land. And they could do that because they had money. There used to be a fund that the town had that every year it was, I believe it was $100,000 that, that the town would add to that fund. So it was available to the selectmen if they had to move quickly to buy some property or some opportunity available, they could do that. Uh, we stopped doing that uh, pretty much after the, buying the Lowell uh, Woods property. Uh, but that Lowell Woods property is another example. The town had the money to put a down payment on the land. Then they had time holding the land to go and head it and, and, and go to town meeting and go to the state legislature for our money to, to purchase it. Uh, they can't do that today because the town doesn't have that money set aside. So, so should, uh, we, should we think about maybe reestablishing that? We've been relying upon the Westwood Land Trust who's done a very good job. I am a board member of the Land Trust, but they have done a very good job of doing that and the town has kind of stepped back and left everything completely to the land trust to acquire land or to acquire conservation easements uh, on the land. Should they you continue that, that approach or should the town get more involved? Sometimes something becomes available and the uh, selectmen have the rights of first refusal. And in that case, what they do is they immediately turn it over to the land trust. And then the land trust, and quite often the land trust uh, also does not have enough money sitting around to act on some of these things. Uh, so uh, some of these opportunities are lost. So uh, I think we need to think about that. May I just interject? It's related yeah. to, so along those lines of money for open space, we did ask in the survey 
if you took it, you already know that we asked about CPA. And 42% um, said they would support, 35% said that they would maybe support, and 23% said no. And I think that's a really big question to ask because along with acquiring of land, there's also some uh, maintenance pieces in town that don't have funding for. And those include the playgrounds and um, the tennis courts. And the tennis courts I see were mentioned in here as one of those areas. And um, you know that's something that if you had outdoor um, space funding available, you can do things too. Yeah, you can do you can rehab projects. projects to rehabilitate mm -hmm. those areas. Exactly. Yeah, so. that's right. So the town has tried twice to, uh, to join the CPA. Uh, the first time we had a general election uh, and it, it lost, I don't know if it lost by a huge margin, but it, it, there was some discussion about how much the information got out properly about what the benefits of that would be. But there was an opportunity right when the CPA first started to get in early and to uh, get the maximum, at that time it was a 100% match and they first started CPA. Uh, so that opportunity was lost. Then years later, I know there was a committee and I was on the committee to, to rec whether rec we should recommend to the town to go forward and, and try to join uh, CPA again. And uh, the committee recommended that we do uh, go ahead and do that and it went it was, this time it went to town meeting, but the FinCom did not uh, recommend it and failed at town meeting. Uh, I don't know if the town's ready to try a third time. Uh, the other thing that I've heard mentioned that's been kind of a, a talked about piece has been trail maintenance and being able to run programming and highlighting those maps and maybe partnering to do mm -hmm. some programming type pieces, you really have to have you know, be able to groom them and keep up on what the access looks like on the trails. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, mm, I, I think that's coming. That, a that's a couple of items down. On oh, my good. List. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that is an item. The uh, CPA and uh, and I believe the town can set the amount, right? Up is to three percent. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so when we originally did it, we went for the max. Uh, because we want to get the maximum return on our money, which at that time was 100%. But you can do it at 1%, 2%, you can do it at half a percent. And, and sometimes people don't realize that amount can change when, when you adopt it. Uh, once a town adopts CPA, uh, they adopt it a certain amount, but it's easy enough to, to change that rate or that you want to go on. Because you, it's, it's a, you know, it is a, a, a uh, surcharge on, on your real estate bill. Uh, and uh, and then, of course, the other question came up at the time was, should commercial uh, real estate be included or not? And, uh, and, and that was a question of concern. So there are a lot of things that we can, so it's not just a simple, you know, do you join CPA, do you adopt CPA, uh, it's at, at what rate, uh, and to get started with and, and to uh, continue doing it year after year. But other towns have, have done it and you have to realize that every, anytime uh, someone pays a fee at the Registry of Deeds, uh, a big portion of that money is going to other towns in CPA money. Zero of it is going to Westwood because we have not adopted the CPA. Is it something that every homeowner gets assessed in the tax bill? Or yes. Or yes. Right. So, so we would just bill, it, all of us would pay, pay and an additional, money goes percentage. Percentage. additional amount. Yes. Yeah. And this funding would be used for the general maintenance used, of trails or like... It could be used for purchase of land and used for maintenance of facilities. It can also be used for um, affordable housing and historic preservation. Right. So things like the Urban Baker House. For years we struggled to uh, Preserve that and to uh, maintain that. That could have been done with CPA money. Is it across the board, even, or is it based on the property value? Is that it's a percentage. 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 It's a percentage. Yeah, so one percent would be you pay an extra one percent of your real estate. Yeah. Yeah. And I think three is the max. Yeah. And and you can look. You can. It's all listed. Uh, 
CPA has a website you can go to and you can see what towns have adopted it uh, and what percentage they, they <coughs> have adopted. Yeah. And you can also adopt with exemptions, so you yeah. can exempt low-income households and senior households mm -hmm. um, and commercial properties, and I think the first $100,000 um, of your property tax. Your assessed value. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a really ideal time to bring this up again. We're it is, about or open it's space not. And oh, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. So obviously, it's a. Well, many neighboring communities stuff. have joined mm -hmm. recently, or in the past, you know, five to ten years. Um, yeah. And and more recently, cities have joined. Yes. For a long long time, cities didn't want to raise their uh, taxes, but they they changed the provision. And it's so that you can what, use you can use taxes. things like hotel taxes and things to help get a bigger state match. And so we have it in Boston, and I think I pay like forty-two dollars a year or something towards it. It's pretty small. I think it's pretty important because, from even like our standpoint, Karen and I have come across so many instances of just it's tree removal and issues within conservation land that we have to absorb through our operating budget, which probably I shouldn't be. I mean, in theory, is I always say to Karen, conservation doesn't have any budget for this, and we're going in there, we're dealing, and we end up doing it. But if there was a set amount that we could go in, especially trail maintenance, we've gone into hail so many times in-house, that we have our staff allocated to the public right of way done, and we still have to bounce around and go in and do these things that technically, if we had financial support, we could contract out and or staff it appropriately to be able to maintain like we want to maintain it. So just to, just to be clear, maintenance is actually prohibited under the Act, but if things are categorized as preservation, so sometimes it's a fine line, maintenance right. is considered something you do on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but if something, you know, gets to a point where it's no longer maintenance, it's called preservation. So there's mm -hmm. a I don't know, I'm not giving you a straight answer, but there's, um, let's say a trail is so overgrown that it's, you know, compromised, it's not really usable. It's not something that you have to necessarily do every year with CPA funds, but you could go in and have a project that would, you know, I don't even know what you do exactly to trails, but if you have any surfaces you need to redo, or if there's root removal or tree removal or what have you, or ADA compliance, mm -hmm is something you can do with CPA funds under rehab. Um, but if it's like a regular maintenance, that's the piece that I want to yeah, emphasize. Everything you just yeah. said is everything that we do. Right. You get called upon when it's, oh my God, we can't even get down this right now. Right. So that you can justify. So preservation, the definition is protection <coughs> of the resource from harm right. or injury. Yeah. Let's go for it. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, think, I think we should, but aside from that, I think we still ought to, uh, just to come back with there ought to be some sort of mechanism, not just for maintaining trails, but for integrating the trails and the conservation areas with the rec department. And the other thing, Todd, that that's Joe spent a lot of time on, not just trails, but there's got to be maintenance of the streams in this town. Oh, sure. Because when that brook behind Willard Circle isn't maintained, yeah. those folks are underwater. Mm -hmm. So aside from the CPA, I think yeah. it's something in this, as far as preservation, open space, and recreation, we ought to think about some sort of mechanism to maintain those areas. Yes, absolutely. So I think it's important to those yeah. neighborhoods. Yeah. All right, so we should definitely discuss this further. Uh, do we need a, to bring in someone from the CPA to talk to us? or? Yeah, uh, I know Stuart's I always happy. Stuart Sagna okay. uh, loves coming out to communities to talk about CPA. All right, uh, so we'll do that as part of one of our meetings. Uh, and now speaking about trails, I mean, I've been doing something in, in Nicole and uh, knows about it and the DPW people uh, know about it is, is I've been trying to get a trails program going in the town. And the, the concept briefly is that over the years we've had volunteers who have done trail work, organized hikes, uh, other events on our trails in town. But these people come and go. and uh, But there are always volunteers out there somewhere, people that can do it. What we need is someone organizing the volunteers. Uh, one, one volunteer retires, leaves town, whatever. Uh, we come up with somebody else that would 
and different things like trail adoption programs and uh, you know cleanups. So we we discussed this at uh, when we were talking about the comprehensive plan in the open space part of that, and uh, Hale Reservation stepped up and said they'd be willing to do that. Uh, so naturally, they'd have to be compensated for that. And uh, so currently, we have a request in the budget, and how it looks like we're asking for ten thousand dollars, five from each from the uh, uh, from the budget of the recreation department and the DPW to provide money to do that, <coughs> uh, and hopefully uh, that will happen. But that's something we can. Uh, work on further on, on, on this committee uh, to, to make that happen. The, in, the, in the past, there's been all, well, the Conservation Commission, uh, <coughs> we had a few, in, in the past, we had some hikes with the, sponsored by the Conservation Commission, the League of Women Voters. I know I led, I co led uh, one of more of those hikes. We said Biodiversity Day. Uh, right now, the uh, Earth Day cleanup is being done by a volunteer who's moved out of town, but she continues to, mm. to organize it. Uh, and, and the DPW doesn't have uh, the time to go and, and maintain the trails the way they should be and could be maintained. Uh, but if we had volunteers to do that, we could do the most of it. And, on, and the DPW is only needed, like I, I, I called Todd, when a large tree comes down and, and you know, we really need heavy equipment. Uh, and, and that would relieve them of, of that burden uh, and get these people that want to be active in doing these things, get them doing it. And, and that will kind of, uh, just that some entity organizing it regularly year after year is, uh, is, is that's the way we want to go with that. So that item, I, hopefully, that will happen soon, and uh, maybe the implementation of it will get ahead of the, the plan that we're doing here. That's what has, I'd like to see. Has finance been brought into that, though, as far as the budget, putting that in? It's going through the process, so I... Because I've already you submitted, and I haven't... Yeah. Oh, you haven't? There uh, wasn't a line item specifically. Yeah. So we, we last met on that, um, I think it was probably June, if you remember? Yeah. Over the summer, yeah. okay. we met we and discussed Mike. that. Yeah. With, my, with Mike, you were there. I, if mm -hmm. you, I don't think you were there. I think Brendan was there instead. Was there. And you were each asked to add it to your budget, but okay. it's not too late. Oh, Pam I am still reviewing the budget. Yeah, Pam yeah. is still reviewing the budget. Yeah, Pam is Brendan add that. So. Okay, so I'm glad I got to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's another five thousand dollars for five thousand dollars each yeah. to yeah. contribute on an annual basis. So this would be the first year. Because we put your pro farm maintenance. Obviously, that's something separate, but yeah. that would be. All right, I'll, um, so let's I'll discuss that because I wonder if that would make more sense just to keep under maintenance. Yeah, it would be better I don't know under our if budget. Our budget would really. No. Well, it wouldn't just be maintenance. Thing. It would be maintenance and programming because part of the funding yeah. would be for Hale to mm -hmm. to um, put together a program organization. So for hikes, okay. and so yeah, that's why that's why a portion of it was to be under recreation. They'd be training people to lead hikes and organizing them and, and getting the people to organizing them. And they'd be providing the publicity and things like that. Yeah. And the volunteers would be carrying out out the actual We can program. schedule a follow-up meeting. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll talk to Brennan and Mike and see what the... Okay. Yeah. Who right was, the, was the gentleman from Hale? Do you remember who it was? Uh, speak to us about it? I forget the moment. Please wait. You know, I have the Okay, well, we'll invite him back and we'll go over it again. <coughs> All right, and uh, and recently we've had a lot, at, at town meeting, there's a lot of discussion about sidewalks on Gay Street. Sidewalks, I mean, are they part of a recreation and, and uh, open space plan? They're kind of like open space. No one's going to build anything on it, but they, besides being transportation, they're definitely <coughs> recreation. And the fact is, they connect conservation land, they connect our parks, schools. Uh, so that uh, sidewalk should be part of, of this plan. Now, we just had MAPC get a bicycle and pedestrian uh, plan, and we also have a 
sidewalk plan that from the pedestrian uh, bicycle safety committee. Uh, we can look at that and uh, that needs to be mentioned and somehow incorporated into the plan because I think sidewalks are an essential part of an open space and recreation plan. Is that, is that, is that common in other towns? Uh, when we talk about access, um, but not necessarily sidewalks, I, I'm gonna, but I can see the connection. Um, mm -hmm. So it would be good for us to have, if, you have, if we don't already, Gina might already, or need the copies of those plans, or if they're on, online. Um, to they're, they are online, oh, but I can send a copy just to make sure you get okay. it. Okay. And, and use, I use sidewalks in a broad term. Sometimes it's, it's a sidewalk if it's along the side of a road. Sometimes it's a, it's a trail. It might be connecting two roads, or uh, and what I I always like to see, which is done in other towns, is you have a path on the other side of the stone wall. Uh, in towns, you see them in Lincoln, Sudbury, uh, Wayland. Yeah, so they don't have to. You have that two-lane country road with the with the stone walls on either side, and rather than disrupting them by building. Uh, sidewalks on the side, you build a path on the other side of the wall. A lot of times that requires a uh, conservation e easement uh, from every property that goes through. <coughs> but you see other towns have done it, and it's not only an accepted thing, it's a desirable thing. Uh, I know I've hiked in places like Lincoln, and I'm in the trail and realize, gee, we're really walking through someone's backyard here. and they, People look out and there are these people walking by, but they don't think of that as a bad thing. They think it's a great thing. As a look, I look out in my backyard and there are cross country skiers, snowshoers, hikers going by. Uh, and I think the attitude about that has changed in this town, and more and more people are saying, hey, this, this is a good thing. They want trails, they, they want to do this. And, uh, and the first example of one is on Gay Street between Fox Hill and Thatcher. We now have a trail that goes behind uh, the stone wall. It's been and that and, and plans show that being that incorporating that into the sidewalk plans for Gay Street at this point. Uh, and the problems have been, you know, maintaining it. I've gone out and maintained it myself a, a number of times. But with the trail <coughs> programming uh, that we're trying to get in our budget, we could get people to adopt the trail, we can have uh, volunteers regularly maintaining it, so it does get maintained, it doesn't get overgrown. The only problem that's a work done is that we hear that, that is the minute you get volunteers and people donating their time, typically that group does a great job until that group fades away, and then the burden of the maintenance lies within the town's yeah. responsibility. Well, that's, that, that's exactly yeah. what happened with Fox Hill. Right. And now that portion of that's consistently underwater as it is anyways, but I think we have to be aware of it's a great idea, it's a great concept of keeping those organizations on board consistently and not having them fade yeah. away a year and a half, two years which, later. And which then again, was that time? Uh, the Fox Hill, from Fox Medical All States. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the whole idea of having hair reservation being a, a paid uh, organizer right. would be that the continuity would be maintained. Right. Someone, someone quits for whatever reason, <coughs> they would be brought and get a replacement right. on that right. show. I agree. Uh, and then, yeah, we could get that maintained because it's been a, a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think overall, the thing we want to think about is, and it, this happens with all plans, is is this a plan, uh, you know, plan versus implementation? Uh, are we going to have a plan which, in the old days you would say, it gets, you, you finish the plan, it gets put on a shelf until it comes time to revise it and you take it off the shelf. You wouldn't say that anymore. You would say you have a plan and you'd store it away on your, in your database on your, your files that you search. And when it comes time, you would download it again and, and, uh, and go to revise it. So we want to think about, you know, everything we do, how do we implement it? Who, what, where, and, and, uh, and when. So it's important to, to keep that in mind so that, that we have, not only do we have a new uh, open space and recreation plan, but we have something that's really happening. Now, I'll let anybody else wants to join in on any 
items or anything that they want? Can I add in one thing at the end? Sure. I know I'm not the you know committee member, but um, one of the main things about keeping a plan alive and implementing is not just having an implementation um, plan within the plan, but also having an entity that's responsible for it. So I don't know if you all are staying on to do that, but um, having some entity, and it's helpful if it's also the folks that were involved in creating the plan. So when we did the last comprehensive plan, there were two charts in the back uh, that they had, and, and they went through everything that, wanted to be, that we wanted to be implemented, and they assigned a board or a group to do it. Uh, and then, so they, they organized it by, and you can go through there and, and you can see, it's, it's organized once by the type of, uh, of, uh, of, of action, and then it was sorted by who's supposed to do it, so that you have a complete list of who's going to do what. And maybe we should think about doing something similar. Uh, on, on yeah, I think, I think that's useful. I, I just want to say that without a group like you all <coughs> to oversee that, those groups don't always remember that mm -hmm. they're supposed to do all these things. Can I back up to your earlier question, Steve? More input. Nicole, we haven't met. I kind of like the idea of, of incorporating uh, recreation in our open space areas. And what I'm thinking of, Steve, is, is we, I don't think we've really capitalized on the Fawcett River down off the University Ave as far as an opportunity for a, a canoe launch or a kayak launch or something. It was nice seeing them buzz around Buckmaster Pond, but I think there are opportunities that we ought to explore that we put on the table. Well, I saw in here course. that Buckmaster was one of the highest um, utilized areas, and you'd have to think that it's probably because there's water and it's right. beautiful, and, and but there's limitations on the access there, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So. There is some, but there's not enough. Mm -hmm. No, but when we did University Station, that was one of the topics that I know the planning board, the conservation, put on the table. I don't think we've really fully realized all the opportunities we can in that area. Yeah, and so I'm, I, I'm not sure what the status of that is. There's, there's supposed to be a canoe launch area, and it's not really, there was no place to put it in Westwood itself. Uh, so it's, it's uh, actually in Norway on the University Road, and it's supposed to be at the beginning of University Road. Because uh, the other end of University Ave where at the railroad station where there used to be a canoe launch there, that will not be available once they do the, uh, hopefully, the So that's the included in the, the project is for them to build a new one? The University Station project is not. Yeah, there. the problem was, yeah, it was, it was in there, the university uh, is there for the, for the uh, Westwood, Westwood station. station. But then when we went from Westwood Station to the University Station, I think that caught lost in the shop. There is a canoe launch right there at the trustee's property. Yes, yes. and there's, yes, there's one at Signal Hill. Hill. Can. Yeah, right. yeah, it's just right on the other but side. We, yeah, but there's an opportunity to put one closer, uh, it's right off the road there, right next to uh, Shields Packaging. I'm not saying we have to solve it, it's just <coughs> yeah. part of our plan to explore. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess I also think yeah, if there's yeah. goals in this plan and action items, if this is updated, would you say every five to seven, seven years? years? Every seven so, years. So, I mean, I think that's a timeline that's a little bit more realistic. If our commissions and boards are all going to hear about this more regularly, then um, mm -hmm. makes it a little easier to stay yeah. fresh on it. Obviously, the final item on this board would be: do we continue this board? How often, or do we just? dismantle it and, and, and reconstruct it several years later, or do we continue this meeting maybe on a, a some basis? Right so, so this board was established for the planning itself. What we may do is have then an implementation committee that could be as many members of this board who felt that they could continue on. Um, and it might involve other members as well. But there might be some people that were not going to stay on for the implementation. And again, if, if whether it's the Conservation Commission or some other group uh, that's going to implement some of these things, uh, that's what we want to look into. Uh, you know, who's, uh, did the conservation, has the Conservation Commission actually started on any 
management plans for any individual conservation areas? Yes, we're um, trying to get some uh, hydro raking done at Prairie Cross Pond. So, but we're just re focusing on the water right now. In my areas. They're working on individual implementation items. They don't yeah. have established yeah, plans. plans. Yeah, oh, so you go ahead and do anything, but you don't have a plan behind right. it. Right. Yeah, so really, yeah, you really need a plan behind it. And, uh, well, one of the, one of the reasons we want to update the Open Space and Recreation Plan is so that we can obtain funding that could yeah. put together the management plans. So this is our first step. So the management plans for all the properties, and not just, not only the conservation properties, but recreation properties as well, those management mm -hmm. plans would come out of this. That would be an implementation strategy. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the goal to have this finished, the date? Uh, it was March. I don't know if we're um, likely to make that. It, it, if we could have it done in March, have it to the planning board, they would be able to put it on the spring town meeting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if we don't make that, we can still put it on the fall town meeting. The town meeting endorsement is just a, a formality before we send our plan off to the state. I don't, well, think, I don't think it's actually deadline. required. Does the state have a deadline? They, they don't. They'll accept it when it comes in. And the, there are regular grant programs that mm -hmm. run on an ongoing so, so I think we'd like to get it done as soon as possible. That's the answer. If we want to go to Springtown meeting, we would need to have this plan written by March. I don't know if we'll make that because we did fall back a little bit and kind of schedule dates around the holidays. Would it be good to know what the, some of those grant programs are so we can help focus? Well, the grant program, it, it'll take a while from the time we get this to the state before the state approves it and we become yeah. eligible for grants. So I can tell you what some of the grant programs are now, but that doesn't mean those will be yeah. grant programs available by the time we're ready to jump into a cycle. Mm -hmm. But we can give examples of programs that are available now. So something similar to complete street programs, Todd is very familiar with. We <coughs> adopted a complete street plan, and then after we did that, became eligible for funding under that program. Um, but it wasn't until we had the plan written, adopted, and approved that we became eligible. And that, that program has changed over time as well. Sure. So. so does the town have someone that really looks at some of these grants and, and says, you know, what, what grants are out there, ones with, that, uh, that are applicable to us and that we can apply for and actually go ahead and apply? So I think several of us do it. When we receive notice of a grant, we shoot it around to anyone who might have a reason to apply for that grant. But we don't have a, a the town doesn't have a grant yeah. writer. Each, each department handles grants as they can. Is that something we should be thinking about? Having a grant writer yeah. for the town? Mm -hmm. um, Stick with the open space. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the town is looking to, well, that, that to might add be. to its staff right now. I don't think yeah. town meeting would be willing to budget for that. I think if we're looking for funds um, to acquire land, that's probably a higher priority. So I just would like to speak a little bit to the recreation services um, that have come before, and Anne is from our recreation commission, um, and so we've had several conversations. One of our big conversations um, that we've had has been around um, a community center um, and having space for programming. Uh, currently we use the school department um, for a lot of our space, <coughs> and we have um, the ICC is uh, some recreation space provided, and that's being considered for some changes as well. Um, so that's something that we want to make sure is um, written about and noted as it was in the previous plan, um, but we want to just continue that conversation. And what would that look like for the community? Um, along the lines, and not to say, you know, depending on what type of space we went for, for community space, um, the other indoor area that's been mentioned quite a bit to us is gym space. Um, and that there is a shortage of, of gym space in town. Um, and then we have the field space that we have, um, especially in the spring, is very tight. Um, and it's also been noted that Westwood Lodge, if that field goes away, that we would be short on field space. Um, and so things that have been talked about for field space has been addition of field space, um, and that one parcel of land that's located adjacent to the high school has been mentioned for field space. Um, and also uh, we're looking at lighting fields um, because that would um, be a way to take our current fields and increase the amount of use time we have for those. Um, 
Other projects that we've had, uh, we're currently undertaking uh, the tennis court um, revitalization, um, which includes the downy courts and the high school courts getting resurfacing, um, and looking at the Sheehan courts um, that are going to be repurposed for, some, for another use. Um, so that's been a big item um, topic. <coughs> and the other one that's been huge is playgrounds. Um, and the rec department and the DPW department have been working together over the last several years to have our playgrounds inspected. And um, we have several uh, projects going on right now. One is a, a new playground going in, and one is um, replacement of some of the equipment in one of the playgrounds. So those have been big projects. And the lighting of the tennis courts as well. And the lighting the of the tennis yeah. courts at the high school. Potential. Um, again, with the lighting of the tennis courts, uh, we currently have no uh, nighttime tennis um, abilities here. We don't have any courts that are lit. Um, so that would be something that would expand um, an opportunity for those who would want to play in the evening to be able to do that. Is anything else? The replacement of the Islington tennis courts on your agenda? So the replacement of the Islington court um, has been recommended to hold off on um, until the construction over there ends. Um, we do have a design plan that was put together, um, but it includes you have to tear out the basketball court and reposition both courts. Um, and the estimated price that came in was um, around $600,000. Um, so that project, um, just because of the layout and the tightness of the space, is a difficult project, and um, you know it, it's on the list of all the um, all the items for uh, tennis. And I, I think the the price tag is really what's scaring everybody. Away. Well, and then the MBTA easement, we couldn't do anything yet anyway. With the bridge. Yeah, because we don't know. Yeah, are there other opportunities in the schools to put in another tennis court? Is that been explored? We have two other locations that we've we've looked at. We haven't actually laid <coughs> them out, but we have contacted the school to see if it would work. Um, one is at Sheehan. Is that where we laid one out? And then to Hanlon. And it was Hanlon. Thank you. And yeah. then um, the other site that we looked at was the um, the school street playground, um, the field area behind there. But again, then we'd be losing be a field. So yeah. 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 yeah, and and the, and they're all. It's I not great parking. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, and Hanlon like School is a, is a good an possibility. Yeah, that's not far. Yeah. Um, but that, again, needs discussion with the school department. Yeah. So I think a big change we from the, before when we did this plan and, and now is, is there was a real serious shortage of recreational fields. And, and the town at one point was really seriously looking at more land for recreational fields. But that went away because what they did instead was put artificial turf on a number of the fields, mm -hmm. and that meant they could better use and they didn't need yep. that. And the uh, lighting with that, yeah. yeah. Get more so how the more lighting is the really bigger factor than the, the turf. Usage. Yeah. Okay, I mean, use are hours. there more fields that could use artificial turf so Abs you can utilize them more? Absolutely, I mean, that the, for cross soccer and the football programs that there are, well, they're not in, they're not in the spring. The spring is the really big problem <coughs> because the lacrosse and Soccer programs use the same fields, and they and start. And they the start somewhere. March is a tough month to start. Exactly. There's yeah. no daylight at, at the beginning of the season. Um, so the fields are unusable probably until what? Yeah. yeah. Well, well you yeah. This I do the scheduling for soccer, all the games and the practices, and the first three or four weeks is very challenging. Um, and so the the one thing that I know uh, that the lacrosse both of the lacrosse leagues and the soccer league would very much like to see is more lighting, even if we were just to take Thurston Lower and add lights to it. It's even a bigger deal than the, than the turf itself. So how much management do you actually have to do on the turf fields? You know, turf field would require minimal maintenance. So but it's your your initial investment, yeah, is it's high. through the roof. Yeah. And, and your and replacement after 10 replacement years. Replacement after 10 years, and people are they sometimes get fooled with the notion, oh, well, you don't have to maintain it as much, so it must be cost-effective to have the turf. In fact, there's no, it's probably a dead heat, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. So but, the, but, the but, play, but the amount of use, you're gaining the playability 24-7 on it. When it rains, they're dry. When it <coughs> snows, we have equipment now that can properly... Weather, no resting the fields. That's right. Really, so. so, but, you, you know, you get into the lighting, too, you have to look at... 
proximity of the field to neighbors, and that's where the that's the problem with the concerts. Right, exactly. So, but yeah, I mean, if, if the town's willing to support it financially, tear fields everywhere would be great. But <laughs> it's yeah. a pretty hefty investment unless you're severe. Do you think it would give you more time to do other projects that we're yeah, looking at? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So, so that's a definite thing. We could come up very specific in this plan. We can have a priority list, uh, that sort of thing. Just take one large field. You do. I agree. The small With fields, light. the one elementary, is, they're fine. I agree. The small fields are great. There's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. There's more than we actually use, so. So the lodge, does it get a lot of use from soccer and lacrosse? The, I think it does, right? Well, so soccer's <coughs> been using the lodge, and it's relieved the pressure from the space that we share. I think it's really the only way we're getting by. Yeah, yeah. it is, from what I could tell. The fall, uh, you know, the fall really is fine. I just yeah, lived through yeah. it my third fall, and yeah. it's the fall is, is fine. Mm -hmm. It's the spring. It's the spring because soccer is it's equal sizes in the seasons, mm -hmm. and uh, soccer program. I mean, the lacrosse program is really growing. They've grown and shrunk, uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, I, I don't think there's any reason to think that they're gonna. The total is going to get I mean, smaller. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Small. How is Deerfield permitted out with the new layout there and softball, softball versus softball. Yeah. Is softball growing in size again with respect to numbers? And I don't think we saw huge growth. I think they maintained. Um, but, I mean, they're given priority for the diamonds. Right. And that's, that kind of I mean, that's really kind play. of, does. it yeah. sort of does for soccer. Yeah, I mean, that. That was the whole idea with the, the premier diamonds being put in there. Was right. That was really for softball. And Who's using that field? The diamonds? Softball. The youth softball is using it, um, but soccer will play in any open <laughs> space that can yeah. be found. So um, that was, I mean, that is sharing, and I think it worked some, um, but I don't know that it, it really it worked work. the way. Yeah, it wasn't the most It wasn't the mini fields right? anymore. It was used for... Was it we used to practices. Practice. We didn't have a game there this year. We only used it for practices. And when people are desperate, they don't need goals, so it doesn't matter. They just need green space. Yeah. And the minute you op try to open the fields in the spring, that's where your challenge is because you're behind the eight ball right out of the gate. So the turf fields at that point would help and aid in that. You yeah. can't go on the field, it's too soft. That doesn't happen with the turf, so. Yeah. Well, we're all crammed in. Like, there's a the schedule of the first couple of weeks in the spring when the fields open, I mean, right. you can imagine, she's chiseling off a little time to lacrosse yeah. and a little time to us, and then we're dipping it into smaller pieces. Yeah, yeah. We kind of, spray. I mean, in spring, we often start the soccer season, there's teams that have maybe practiced once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that happens a lot. Not, not last year, but a lot of other years. So. <laughs> anyway. All right. Anybody else have any issues or things of concern? Yeah, I just think one thing that didn't come up early was um, and maybe it did the, the use of the Boy Scouts because I know that they had done some trailblazing up behind. Um, right, so so under the Trails program, that would organize, you know, every year we have Eagle Scouts and they're looking for things to do and they don't know who to go to sometimes. They get a lot of that sometimes. Yeah, and, and, uh, and so we can. Uh, we, then I would be part of the organization on the trails program. If we do that. Uh, yeah, I would just, yeah, I would just say I just yeah. can't remember hearing. Um, uh, no, they didn't say anything for them. Yeah. Do I have something? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it falls under this committee, but um, talking about the town's preparedness for climate change and severe weather events, um, which are just going to keep happening. I mean, we may not gain fires like they're having in. California right now, but flooding is a huge concern in the area. Lizards, of course, snow removal, and trees, trees falling down, work in the insurance industry, so I'm very aware of when they come down. <laughs> um, it could apply if there are key lands um, okay. to protect that could provide upland for habitat to kind of flee from 
um, when things are flooding. flooding. Yeah, exactly. It's primarily, I mean, I guess yeah. we could have fires, but. I mean, that would be the way I would see it incorporated into the plan, but mm -hmm. we, we can also get creative about it. Huh? Okay. Yeah. And, and really, we really only need to touch on it in this plan because mm -hmm. the open space plan will be an element of the comprehensive plan, and the comprehensive plan, when we rewrite that, will have a, its own element. It will have its own, okay. Yes. Right. The, yeah. that's, Geared towards, uh, I don't know exactly what we're going to call it. Um, maybe emergency preparedness. It's probably um, resiliency and sustainability is probably probably the topic we'll put under. But it'll be its own element, okay. and then each of the elements of the plan will tie into it. And so the open space element that comes out of this. And who would work on the resiliency? The, there'll be a new committee, comprehensive plan steering committee. I know someone who should be on the committee. Get ready for was complicated. No, it's not me. No, we know who. That won't start until we're well along in this plan, because this yeah. has to go into the comprehensive plan. So we right. wanted to That's what we'll get this done first, but that, yes, we will be tackling that. I think it'll be resiliency and sustainability. Okay, great. Okay, anything else? <coughs> Then uh, we're going to arrange. Well, we have the next meeting. One thing I just, I just want to add, for you from a conservation standpoint, I think we've really uh, been looking at the water resource areas as the invasive species that have pretty much overtaken all our ponds and streams. And Perry Krause is kind of sort of a litmus test for us to sort of see what it's going to cost, what it's going to actually put out, and what it's actually going to bring to the, the, the community. So we're really interested in bringing that into this program and mm -hmm. what we're doing. I know it's a huge cost and, and a lot of management, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that I think a lot of us are pretty passionate about on conservation. So, As beautiful as those trails are. And where are you looking at this now? <laughs> Perry, 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 Krause. Perry Krause right now. <laughs> Um, is kind of the litmus test, and they were supposed to do that in July. Um, unfortunately, we're so low on the total. Okay. Those who don't know exactly where is that? Perry Cross is it's sort of that extension. Between Pond Street, Street and High Street. Street. Westview. Okay. Westview, yeah. Um, and, you know, we're just we want to see how it's going to work and see how we can implement it um, at this point in time. But more importantly, that's a part of the zone two of the well fields off Dover Road. So when it comes to open space, it's an area that does have to be looked at. It is zone two. It is zone two? Yeah. All the way past you know, St. Margaret Mary's, it's all zone yeah, two. Yeah, I mean, uh, all these, these yeah. areas right now. I mean, last night we had a tree fall during <coughs> a storm right here. and, and knock out the power right here, right, up, right across the street here. Um, and uh, it, that was a dead, dead, dead tree that are all around our pond. So, you know, something else to add into there that is to help to make that. Those the ponds and the streams play into your flood control. It was mm -hmm. a little circle. You don't maintain yeah. that, those folks end up in a bad spot. Yeah, yeah and enforcing, you know, what we also see is uh, really the, the, uh, the dams that we have in and around it. Who's going to be responsible for taking these? Because they're completely undermined and pushed away. And, and uh, those could cause some serious problems to flooding the areas as well. So. Have, have we worked with the Ponce River Watershed on that at all? Or? What's, what is it? It's like different people own them? Is that what it is? They're privately owned. The dam on um, oh, the Bristol Hill is privately owned. Yeah. I, we tried to contact <laughs> That's a great one. one. That's, yeah. that's, a great that's one. the one that when it goes and we've drafted letters. We've oh, no. The Ponce River Water Association did have a dam in I think off of Mill Street that they were going to remove, but then that fell through. They had the corporation on the owner, and then something happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's the one, right? It's not no, 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 I'm thinking about Father Joe there. Yeah. yeah, in the book. Yeah. Now, we can work with them on some of these issues. Yeah. Yeah. And the Ponce River Water Association will be happy to work with the town on some of these things. Yeah, it's hard to enforce if they're privately owned. Right. Yeah. Until it goes. And who comes in and fixes it? We do. Yeah, that's the us. Okay, okay so uh, <laughs> everybody else at this table can sleep, and I'll be just yeah. running. <laughs> so, so our next works. meeting, uh, our next meeting is January fourth, Thursday night, here at seven p.m. All right, thank you. All right, thank, thank you, you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.